Zion's return in Chicago was foreshadowed by a shocking before and after picture of his weight loss, and after missing all of last season rehabbing a fractured foot, a slimmer, therefore more agile version of the product of Duke University will be thrilling to watch. With a more than solid core in place around All-Stars Brandon Ingram and now healthy 27-point-per-game score, the New Orleans Pelicans have a great chance to exceed expectations. Before continuing, only 13.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so press the box and turn on notifications if you haven't already. Also leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. Back to the content. To start his first NBA game in 514 days, Zion missed badly on a well-contested layup, and this blitz from Zach Levine forced Williamson to get ahead of himself and into an ugly turnover. Aside from those two possessions, the former number one overall pick displayed little to no signs of rust. We'll get back to the tape, but in 15 minutes of action, Zion scored 13 points on 4 of 6 made field goals and 5 of 5 made free throws, equating to an incredible true shooting clip of 79.3%. What stood out to me in his return in Chi-Town was Zion's stamina. Stamina is one of the qualities I most admire about NBA players or really any sportsman, the fast-paced, physically demanding nature of the most competitive 5-on-5 five -five league on the planet, of course takes being in absolute prime shape. Considering Zion hadn't experienced the constant ebbs and flows of that grueling environment for about two years, you can tell he's been committed to maintaining the proper diet and has likely been doing a ton of jogging. To be productive in 5-on-5 five -five scenarios in general, not just in the NBA, stamina is easily the most important quality you need as players want to put themselves in a position physically where it's almost as if they have a video game-esque full bar of stamina. Zion seems to have that, which is why I'm not concerned whatsoever that he has to get used to playing with essentially a different body type. Some people are concerned though, as Shaquille O'Neal had a decent point regarding Zion's weight loss, saying quote, he looks good, but he's Zion, so they're going to be bringing that pain they're going to be bringing that force when they play against him. I just hope his new little body can withstand that. When I started losing weight and getting thin, I would get injured more, you know, especially from contact." End quote. Shaq's point is somewhat valid, and while the extra weight on Zion made him a more dominant back down punisher, helping him to avoid bumps and bruises as well, to me, it all goes back to conditioning, as the weight loss increases Williamson's bounciness, mobility, and is easier for his bad foot to absorb. After the Hernan Gomez dribble handoff and screen gets Zion the mismatch to work on in Drummond, a smooth step back into his drive makes it impossible for Javante Green to make an impact on this downhill attack. Even as Patrick Williams funnels Zion into the help of Caruso, realizing DeRozan's in no man's land, Zion perfectly times this pass out of a double team for a CJ McCollum corner three. This time in transition, no bull puts a body on him, and despite three Chicago players being there for a potential rebound, Williamson muscles through Vucevic and springs up for the putback plus the foul. Comparing this baseline rip through and throwdown coming from the post to a similar play from 2021, and it's clear Zion's getting significantly more elevation. The paw makes a solid contest, forcing him to miss this post up but watch the pogo stick second jump and tough finish through Vooch, acrobatics also displayed in his defense and rebounding. Zion's initial stunt turns into a full-on rotation, which gets him into Mar DeRozan's passing lane for the steal. The paw tries to make a Zion-esque power move after snagging the O board, but persistence and timing allow Williamson to pin Patrick's layup to the glass. Maybe the highest he jumped all night came on this defensive board, Zion's overall a night and day different athlete than he was pre-weight loss. This past July 2nd, Zion was extended on a 5-year $231 million contract, which may seem hefty given he's only played 85 games, but when healthy, the 22-year-old has proved to be one of the association's best young talents. In 61 games pre-injury, Zion dunked the ball 123 times and made 70% of his shots in the painted area, he was extremely efficient overall, taking 17 field goal attempts per night and making an NBA 8th best 61.3% of them. That percentage was 2nd best among all 2021 All-Stars, only behind the 1st ranked newest Minnesota Timberwolves center 
Rudy Gobert. Also, that percentage ranked number one among all power forwards, just ahead of two-time MVP and champion Giannis Adetokounmpo. Zion said his main goal this season was to win a title prior to training camp, which may not have been possible a few years ago with the surrounding personnel, but with the way GM David Griffin's made savvy draft picks and trades to bring in pieces that complement Williamson, the Pels may have just enough to make some noise. The inside-out combination of Brandon Ingram's perimeter bag and Zion's big-man-type screen setting and finishing is underrated. There's a host of people who say the duo can't coexist, given the Pels haven't made the playoffs with both of them healthy. Realistically, whenever both have been on the floor, they've never had the proper talent around them to properly compete. This year, however, that's far from the case, with CJ McCollum there to take a significant amount of playmaking responsibility away from Ingram, and Jonas Valanciunas to take low post responsibility off Zion. From there, an array of young guys in Herb Jones slash Trey Murphy III on the wing, and Jackson Hayes to back up JV up front. Rookie Dyson Daniels is another lengthy wing with IQ, who showed off in some preseason minutes that he can make an impact. Daniels was the 8th overall pick in this year's draft and stuffed the stat sheet in his pro debut with 15 points, 5 rebounds, 3 steals, 2 blocks, and an assist. More experienced players in Devontae Graham and Larry Nance Jr. also went off against the Bulls as Graham dropped 21 and Nance Jr. was a game-high plus 18. While Graham's only played 4 years in the league, compared to a lot of the Pell's young guys, he's a vet. But going back to the Pell's youth, and a big part of that is Jose Grand Theft Alvarado, who made a name for himself last postseason by getting under the skin of Chris Paul in the first round. Meanwhile, a separate video entirely on Brandon Ingram could be put together, as B.I.'s of course one of the smoothest yet deadly perimeter wing scorers in the game. So how high will the Pelicans rank in the Western Conference with Zion's return? To gain more perspective, I want to know your take in the comments. Best answer down below gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's winners are firstly Franz who says PBJ's post fade at 6'10 is classic Kobe or MJ. If the Warriors want to see him jump the learning curve, allow him to play minutes with Steph and Clay, and let him be the distributor from the post. And secondly KT, who says Steph has got to show up for fans in Japan. The pregame stuff is cool, but these people have never seen a flurry live. I think Steph gets closer to 20 minutes next game and gives the fans about 3-4 three four threes, scoring 15-18 to 18 points. That prediction from KT turned out to be true. Anyways, thanks for watching.